Emeritus in Trinity College, Dublin, and it's, uh, I'm delighted that Susanna in the Spanish department asked me to give you the welcome to come to this and to be able to moderate the sessions, which for which seem a very exciting session uh, later, later as we go on throughout the evening. So this event has been taking place since 2003, which basically means that it's one of the longer standing events within college. And it has always attracted a wide uh, audience and a, and a good amount of participation from the students and from visitors to college alike. And in this, in this event, as you know, a representative from academia or cultural life in general or from state institutions will visit Trinity to discuss a relevant aspect of Mexican history, politics, and culture. And today, we're delighted to have here Dr. Lorenzo Cordova, who will discuss a pretty salient and relevant topic, even though it's not related directly, the discussion will be on Mexico, but which is a very important topic, I think, for most scholars of electoral politics in general, and that has to deal with challenges of electoral reform. So oftentimes, for myself, I study <coughs> Spanish politics, and one of the big issues is which is the, which is the electoral system that will give you the most democratic value. So one of the questions I think that we're gonna be dealing with here is to see what are the challenges that we have with electoral reform when it comes to uh, Mexico. So without further ado, I'd just like to give some special thank yous, of course, to our provost in, in Trinity, uh, Dr. Pendergrass, for being here, uh, as well as the ambassadors of Mexico, who is, who is kind enough to meet with us earlier, earlier on, and it was a, a wonderful, great experience to talk to him and his team, as well as the ambassadors from Cuba and Croatia. So I will now leave you with His Excellency Carlos Garcia de Alba, who will give us a presentation uh, of Dr. Cordova. Thank you. Muy buenas tardes. It is a real pleasure to be here with you this evening. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, gratitude is not only the greatest of virtues, but the parent of all others, said Cicero. So I want to start by expressing our deep appreciation for the continuous and invaluable support of Trinity College Dublin to the Mexican lecture, to its provost, Dr. Patrick Prendergast, Thank you for being here with us. Sheena, thank you for being with us this evening. And to Dr. Susana Bayo, the dynamic and efficient head of the Department of Hispanic Studies. Where are you, Susana? Thank you so much. And last but not least, in absence, to the Honorary Consul of Mexico in Kildare, Dr. Tony Smurfit, President of Smurfit Kappa, whose great generosity makes possible this important series of annual lectures. Generosity that this coming 3rd of June will be recognized with the order of the Aztec Eagle, El Orden El Aguila Azteca. Thank you very much to all the three for their interest, professional support, and friendship. I also want to thank my dear colleagues from Cuba and Croatia for being here with us, and to all my country fellows who kindly accepted to attend this special occasion. Muchas gracias, queridos compatriotas de todo lo largo y ancho de la República Mexicana por estar aquí esta tarde. Aprovecho para recordarles que a partir de este próximo 8 de agosto podrán solicitar sus credenciales de elector para votar en la sección consular de la embajada. Ejerzan sus derechos y súmense a los ya más de 70 mil mexicanos en el exterior que la han solicitado hasta el día de hoy. Thank you also for being here with us to Tom, and, Tom Arnold, Director General of the Institute for International and European Affairs, to our dear consul. Uh, honorary Consul in Galway, David Nyland and his family. Lorraine Higgins, thank you for being with us this evening. Mr. George, thank you for being us, with us this evening. Uh, okay. 
On, on the 15th of December 2003, the Ministry for Foreign Affairs of Mexico and Trinity College signed a memorandum of understanding giving way to the Mexican lecture of Trinity College, a series of annual lectures delivered by distinguished Mexican intellectuals and personalities from a quite diverse list of subjects and from different disciplines, ranging from art to history to literature and political science. Maybe, apparently, Susana, someone here can tell us of the very first lecture in 2003 by the celebrated novelist, the great and sadly late Carlos Fuentes, or that of the writer, journalist, and social activist, Elena Poniatowska, or that of the political scientist and sociologist, Jose Waldenberg, or that of the historian and writer, Enrique Krause, or that the very last lecture, last September, by the remarkable sculpture called Sebastián. I have to say, that his sculpture, El Chacmol, looks fantastic at the Lincoln Gate. Thank you so much, Mr. Provost. This time, it is my privilege to introduce to you to a very good friend of mine, Dr. Lorenzo Cordova Vianello, President of the National Electoral Institute of Mexico, INE, who, who, who will introduce us to a very interesting and very relevant subject in the context of the political Irish recent events, the Mexican electoral system and its challenges. Who is Dr. Cordova? Dr. Cordova was born on February 6, 1972 in Mexico City. He has a law degree from the Autonomous National University of Mexico, la UNAM, and doctorate of political theory research from the University of Torino, Italy. As an academic, he lectures at the Faculty of Law at the National Autonomous University of Mexico on constitutional theory, constitutional law, and electoral law. He is as well a full-time researcher on leave at the Institute for Judicial Research of the UNAM, where he was the coordinator in the area of electoral law, and he's also a member of the National Research System Level 3. In 2010, La UNAM awarded him the National University Award for Young Scholars. Lorenzo Cordova is the author of several papers on electoral and constitutional issues and on political theory. His recent books include Law and Power, Kelsen and Schmidt Face to Face, 2009 co-authored with Cesar Astudillo the book Empires of State Elections, a next ray of institutional architecture, 2010. Reform and Control of the Constitution, Implications and Limits, 2011. And with Pedro Salazar, Democracy with Guarantors, The Authorities versus Electoral Reform, 2009. Lorenzo Cordova is a multifaceted person. He's not only a distinguished political scientist and politician, but also a renowned journalist and communicator. He's columnist with a very important El, El Universal newspaper, contributor to the magazine Voz y Voto, and has been a member of the editorial board of several journals. From August 2005 to May 2012, he led the Faculty of Law Journal at La UNAM. Lorenzo was the presenter for the TV program entitled Punto de Encuentro and the Elecciones 09 series on the, on the Congress TV channel, work for which he received the National Prize for Journalism from the Journalist Club of Mexico. Together with Ciro Murayama and Pedro Salazar, he hosted a different Mexico in El Canal 11, Left Lane, Canal 40, and Observatory 
TV UNAM, for which he also received the National Journalist Award 2011 from the Journalist Club of Mexico in the category Journalists on Electoral Issues. In 2010 and 2011, he was the technical secretary of the working group that processed the political reform in the Senate of Mexico and a member of the governing board of the Institute for the Study of Democratic Transition. On the 15th of December 2011, he was appointed electoral advisor to the Federal Electoral Institute, derived from political and electoral reform. On April 2014, he was appointed president of the National Electoral Institute by the Chamber of Deputies of the Mexican Congress. Damas y caballeros, I'm sure that those who have been following the recent difficulties to settle down a strong government in Ireland since the ballot of the last 26 February, or the impressive referendum on same-sex marriage last 22nd of May 2015, this Sunday, the first anniversary, will find all the interesting perspectives of the political system after this assessment of the challenges of the electoral system in Mexico by one of the pivotal actors of the same system. In Mexico, the development of a strong, independent, and trustful institution responsible for the electoral process was a fundamental requirement to move on from a system that had fallen in a dangerous decrepitude. By the end of last century, the Mexican political system ruled by a dominant cooperative party was over after 70 years in power. Indeed, it had proved its efficiency, turning an underdeveloped country in turmoil into a vibrant, diverse, complex country with social and economic advances that cannot be denied. The triumph of the opposition in the polls of 2000 brought situations never seen before in Mexico. A consensus for new rules was needed to give way to the strengthening of democracy and to the political alternation. And in the center of all this was and is the mechanism that gave voice and power to us, ordinary citizens of our country, the electoral process. Well, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, please help me, help me to welcome Dr. Cordova Vianello. Lorenzo, muchas gracias. Thank you very much. I'd like to start uh, uh, thanking uh, uh, the authorities of uh, Trinity College, uh, Mr. Provost, and, uh, and the head of the Hispanic department, Susana, thank you very much. And obviously the uh, Mexican Embassy in Mexico for the invitation. I'm really honored to be here uh, today uh, in, a, in, a, in this Mexican lecture, uh, which uh, has uh, been not only recognized but in, uh, in, many, in many places in my country, but also uh, distinguished by uh, high names I'm the first middle name, uh, despite the presentation, the kindly presentation of uh, Carlos, which is uh, mostly a, a good friend of mine. And that's the reason because of uh, he has presented me as he has done. Uh, thank you very much, everybody, to be here. Uh, in second place, I'd like to apologize uh, with you because, my very, because of my very rough English, I hope uh, uh, the explanation of a uh, electoral, Mexican electoral system, which is very uh, uh, hard to understand and uh, in some ways very bizarre, uh, 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 will not be uh, uh, get it uh, harder to comprehend because of my English. So in the first place, I'd like to apologize because of it. Thank you very much anyway. Um, 30 years ago, electoral processes were a source of political conflict in Mexico at both the national and local level. In many senses, the lack of credibility in the electoral procedures 
and the imperviousness of the national political system uh, to both the increasing pluralism and much of the social demands made elections a cross-cutting and systemic issue among Mexicans. Nowadays, things are radically different. After almost three decades of successful, successful, successive legislative reforms and of underpinning a federal electoral model, a major political consensus was achieved in 2014 to design a new electoral system that would favor the impartiality of the electoral competition at the local level, uh, would enhance and consolidate elections as an anchor for political stability and as a source of governance through the national territory. The 2014 constitutional and legal reform designed a national system of elections that transformed the structure of the electoral, electoral management of the whole country, not only at the national tier, but also at, uh, at uh, that of the states. It's a profound legislative reform which has, trans trans which has transformed the rules of the democratic game to provide greater transparency and equity to the electoral competition far and wide the national territory. It is, in sum, about building a renovated national electoral system that takes advantage of the institutional consolidation of the federal elections, remediates the heterogeneity brought about two decades, and of recreating the electoral competition with rules and institutions modeled according the pluralism and political concerns of each of the uh, 33, 32 states that integrates Mexican Federation. Hence, the new Mexican democracy models transforms the Federal Electoral Institute, the uh, uh, IFE, uh, well new, into a national electoral institute that not only preserves its responsibility for conducting federal elections with all the experience accumulated over more than 20 years, but which also regulates and affects the organization of elections that take place in the entire national territory, including local level. This model tends inevitably to raise the quality of Mexican democracy on three cornerstones. First, the strengthening of INE in two dimensions. One, as a governing body of the electoral system to standardize the criteria and the procedures to recreate democracy in the local elections. And second, and, to, and two, as a guarantee institution to ensure gender equity, equality in the democratic competition, to assure the right to identify of Mexican sitting, to identity of Mexican citizens residing abroad, and to facilitate the exercise of their fundamental rights, in particular that of the suffrage. Second, the bordering uh, the broadening of mechanisms for citizen participation in democratic life, incorporating new direct democracy tools, such as the referendum and the citizens' initiative, and regulating independent citizens' can candidacies outside the orbit of political parties. And third, the encouragement of transparency and accountability of those contending for political power through ballot boxes, using an unprecedented online oversight system that is favoring rated administrative and care and the professionalization of their management officials that links the legis legitimacy of the amount and the origin, origin of resources invested in competition to the validity of the results and standardize the criteria of the accountancy by INE, which is now responsible for the oversight of whole campaigns and pre-campaigns which is uh, how we call the primary elections developed in Mexico. The challenges imposed by the electoral reform to the nascent INE are not even comparable to those IFE faced when it was created back in 1990. The magnitude of the challenges INE has faced in, uh, in its first two years of life are typical to the designing of a new electoral system. In that sense, they are uh, similar to those confronted by IFE during its creation. However, the political context is quite dis distinct 
because of the uh, erosion of the credibility of political parties and certain disenchantment with, poli with politics in general and with democratic life in particular, as well as, this, as a society that suffers from serious structural problems like uh, happens in Mexico. Poverty, social inequality, corruption, impunity, organized crime and insecurity are the new uh, na uh, great national problems that affect the entire social life, including elections and the satisfaction with democracy. Let's back to INEC challenges and allow me to exemplify this. In 1990, the main challenge was to provide credibility to the elections uh, uh, to make suffrage, su suffrage effective, universal, and eliminate the electoral authorities discretional nature that characterized Mexican Revolution regime during almost 70 years. By 1996, autonomous challenge, uh, autonomous challenge was to transform an institution put together by governmental decision into a professional one that could guarantee impartiality and equity in democratic competition. In 2014, the diagnosis which permeated the legislative process of the reform was that the Mexican democracy has evolved in different times on two tiers. One, national, where the independence or impartiality of elections has been verified and recognized internally by political parties and at the international arena by all the experts that have attended as foreign visitors to observe our, ele our elections. And another subnational in the states, where the, quantity, uh, the quality of elections according to the national political parties did not guarantee the equity and impartiality of the voting because they were organized by authorities uh, that uh, were neither impartial, uh, that were neither impartial or fully qualified. Hence, the need to surpass the federal model and to configure a national system of elections that radiates out of the federal entities and standardize the procedures and legal provisions that have been guaranteed free and authentic democratic relations on a national level. Uh, this diagnosis implies the need to strengthen the autonomy of the electoral authorities from local pol politics powers, particularly for governors and their political control, and to raise the quality of democratic competition all over the country, not just in the federal level, but also in local level. Among the novelties included in 2014 reform for the development of Mexican democracy were that differentiate INE from IFE, let me point out the following. One, the designation of the authorities of each electoral management, management bodies, now denominated OPLES, uh, which is uh, the, the acronym from uh, um, uh, Organismos Públicos Locales Electorales, uh, local uh, uh, electoral bodies at the 32 states, which transferred the political pressures of these appointments to INE. Instead, the local congresses that, until then, have the power to appoint the members of the general councils that head each local electoral authority. Two, professionalization of the electoral management bodies of each state, the so-called uh, OPLES, to guarantee the impartiality on the uh, referee, uh, 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 on its referee role, rule and its officials in the local election. Three, uh, issuance of guidelines, issuance of guidelines and criteria for those hopeless to standardize their decision. Four, conduction of the single member electoral boundary delimitation of each state. We must remember Mexico, uh, uh, I insist, has 32 states. And five, oversight of the whole, mo uh, of, the whole, whole of the electoral campaigns that take place in the national territory. Governors, federal representatives, senators, municipalities, the president of the republic, etc. After two years of the creation of INE and of implementing the new democratic model in my, co in my country, I must say that almost all of the attributions 
uh, set out by the 2014 constitutional and legal reform has been successfully carried out by INE. It was not an easy task, but it was successful, I think. Allow me to make a very tight but necessary recapitulation to show the viabi viabi viability of this complex institutional design of the Mexican democracy. 10.6 million signatures supporting four proposals of a referendum were validated within the legal de deadlines and those of the citizen proposing acts initiative, such as the so-called three out of three initiative, patrimonial, fiscal and interest statement, are currently under re re revision. The internal election for the leadership of one of the biggest political parties, the PRD, which by the way, right now is leaded by a former uh, Mexican ambassador in Ireland, the founder of the Mexican lecture. Uh, uh, it was not an easy task, it, but it was successful. By the way, this was uh, the first uh, PRD internal election that uh, uh, were conducted without uh, you know, uh, legal complaints besides tribunals. So I think we do the job. Uh, the electoral councillors, who are right now the authorities of the major decision bodies in the 32 OPLES in the country, uh, we appointed 224 uh, 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 people in total, were designed through public contest following trans transparent criteria and with the collaboration of renowned renowned uh, uh, higher education institution to strengthen the rigor and the independence of the evaluations. 308 guidelines and regulatory crit criteria were issued to advise the decision of the OPLES to, and to standardize the procedures of the local elections. The exclusive attribution to draw the single member electoral district in 15 states was exercised with the support of a group of experts in demographics, informatics, geography, and actuarial analysis, as well as with the participation of political parties, it's an unprecedented situation which guarantee that the electoral geography will not be will, be will be a factor of equity in the upcoming local elections, and that the democratic principle of one citizen, one vote, will be an, an additional starting point for electoral equity in the near future at the local level. The normative documents necessary to make up uh, the National uh, uh, Electoral Professional Service, a civil service career in which the characteristics of for admission, permanence, promotion, and evaluation of, this, uh, of the staff of the local electoral bodies of the entities, the OPLUS, are specified were already issued. Despite bo boycott threats, competitive elections took place in the 300 electoral uh, districts in the country, of the country, with the highest, highest turnout in midterm elections uh, since 2003, last year, uh, in, on parliamentary 2015 parliamentary elections. Independent candidacies became a legally valid letter to access uh, to, pu to public offices. In 2015, there was at least one independent candidate at every level of competition who won the majority of votes. Gender equity favored the largest number of women candidate, candidates in our history and made it possible that for the first time at the beginning of, this, uh, of the present legislature, uh, women amounted to 42% of the representatives. When the behavior of some of the local electoral councillors councillors strayed from the electoral uh, function, the INES General Council exercised its attribution to dismiss them, as was the case uh, a couple of weeks uh, ago uh, uh, of the state of Chiapas, where the whole seven councillors of its citizens and participation and electoral institute were remo removed uh, uh, by uh, uh, INE. The extraordinary election of a federal representative was already organized. The electoral tribunal, tri tribunal the electoral court, mandated that the attribution to fully assume the local extraordinary governor election in the state of Colima, which was quite competed, was exercised by INE. Also, INE took part in, in the eight extraordinary lo uh, local elections that have taken place from 2015 to date. 
An unprecedented local election of Mexico City's Constituent Assembly is being organized right now by INE. And the novel process of issuance of voting cards abroad that will allow our citizens to exercise their political rights beyond our borders and to have an uh, uh, identification document valid in Mexico and overseas has begun last February, starting in the US, but since uh, next uh, August, as the ambassador just said, uh, uh, in the whole Mexican consulates around the world, uh, this service will be provided. Um, in short, this reform has contributed contributed solely in 2015 to alternance in power in one in every of three federal districts, five in nine local executives, to greater administrative control of the income and expenditures of the political parties. No winning candidate went over the expenditure ceilings by 5%, which is a, 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 a hypothesis that a, a law established to annulate elections. To console, it also uh, helped to consolidate pluralism. No party last year obtained 30% of the votes and eight of the 10 contending parties exceeded the 3% threshold set by law. And also, it helps to maximize the exercise of the political fundamental rights of the Mexican through the, the tools provided in the Constitution and the laws to participa participation and filling of initiatives. And with the easiness to obtain the identification means that would facilitate their incorporation to the productive commercial and professional life uh, abroad. Another learning for 2015 experience is the shift in the relation of INE with the OPLIS. In, 2000, in 2015, we conceived a frontier accompaniment with the tasks of the OPLIS and INE were set apart, apart. But the results evidenciated that was not the course. Therefore, in this year, for this year, we decided to fully exert the managing functions and conduct a centrifugal accompaniment to accelerate standardization and fairness, fairness at local elections for the very heart of the OPLIS. Consequently, we have strengthened the communication channels and the regulation instruments, and we have increased the number of areas regulated and directly assumed by INE, like voting from abroad. Last year in Chiapas, the uh, voting, uh, the broad voting uh, uh, for uh, the, uh, local representatives uh, 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 evidentiates that there was a fraud committed in, the, in it. Uh, uh, some people were uh, enlisted to vote from abroad, but they, they never leave the, 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 the state. Uh, worst of, and, and so on, they couldn't vote in their uh, uh, polling vo uh, stations. Uh, uh, worst of it, someone voted from uh, them uh, from abroad. So there was a fraud we couldn't allow in the future. Therefore, the uh, voting abroad uh, system, even in the local uh, 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 level, were assumed in the future, is assumed in the future by in. One of the consequences of the national, uh, uh, sorry, nationalized the, the design of the Mexican democracy is that the electoral cycles have, have been diluted for in. We used to have you know, a, a three-year cycle, the year of the election, the, uh, the year after the elections, and the year of pre, uh, that predecessed the next election. Right now, in Athena, we have elections every year. The lack of homolog homologation in the local elections calendars means that the governing body of the national system has to activate year after year the controls of institutional operation according to the amount of local elections that will take in place. The national electoral system forces INE to be attentive to the conditions in which the elections are organized in each, country, in each entity to issue new regulations and to analyze and, uh, all complaints arise, arising from violations to the political communication model. It is also necessary to encourage according to local electoral calendars, new campaigns for updating the electoral role and the respective nominal spot lists, 
as well as to establish the, and, and monitor uh, the compliance with the schedules in radio and TV according to the distribution approved by INE. As you probably know, since 2007, there is a, a, a communication model that, thank you very much, thank you. There is a communication model, a political communication model in Mexico that prohibits uh, the, uh, uh, the acquisition of times in radio and TV to any people, even political parties. And the use of uh, the state times in radio and TV so the political parties can uh, transmit their uh, programs uh, through spots that INE administrates. INE is uh, also the authority who has to control and monitoring uh, the whole transmission to radio and TV in the country, uh, so to guarantee that the model that prohibits uh, uh, acquisition uh, of time is uh, respected, not just by political parties, but also for uh, uh, third people and uh, by the, uh, uh, the owners of media. In the same way, it is necessary to oversight the income and expenditures of political parties and candidates during the pre-campaigns, as I said, our primary, primary elections, and the campaigns. Thus, the second year of life of the national system of elections is actually the second acid, te acid text, test sorry, for this very system since the responsiveness of INE and its structure to the demands of the local electoral competition is being uh, witness, witness it. Even though uh, there are no federal elections in 2016, this year, it has been an unprecedentedly in intensive electoral year, year for INE. Allow me to show some relevant data. INE, right now, is involved in the or organization of 14 local elections, in which among uh, the more than uh, 170, uh, uh, sorry, 1,700 positions to be chosen are 12 governorships, 388 local representatives, 965 municipalities, 60 con constituent representatives to Mexico City, and more than 2,000 community presidencies in Tlaxcala. Uh, it is estimated that about 68,000 polling stations will be installed and that 30.3 uh, million voters in the 14 states will be able to go to the polls. In terms of the oversight, the context of, of demand from the society towards the parties is rising, so that over 6,000 registered candidates are expected in the course of their campaign to fulfill their obligations to reg register their income and expenditure operations every three days on the online accountancy system. It is important to note that uh, by June the 5th, uh, uh, which is the elections day, INE will not only have participated in the 13 ordinary local elections, but will have uh, entirely conducted two local elections, Colima and the Constituent uh, Assembly Mexico's of Mexico City. Besides, uh, to give an idea of the electoral intensity of this year's election, it should be emphasized that there has never been an alternance in five of the 12 governorships at stake, uh, at stake in 2016, Durango, Hidalgo, Quintana Roo, Tamaulipas, and Veracruz. In 2018, us, in two years, us, Mexican, uh, will live the greatest political and citizen mobilization in our history. And this involves a technical and logistical challenge without precedent for the electoral authorities. Never in the history of Mexico uh, had so many elections conducted on the same time as on July the 1st, 2018. To put it in context, in 2012, the presidential, senator, and federal representatives election concurred with, to, uh, with 15 local elections. In 2015, they coincided with another 14, and in 2018, it will practically double. That year, along with federal elections to elect the president of the republic, the entire senate, and the chamber of representatives, 29 local elections will converge. 
If we take into consideration that we have 32 states in Mexico, it means that in 90% of them, political parties and citizens will be mobilized, uh, mobilized, mobilizing in 2018 to participate in the competition for political power in a democratic manner. Allow me, uh, allow me a, an, an allegory. Given the magnitude of the posts that will be disputed, it is likely that the, that the 2018 elections will be the mother of all organizational, organizational battles for Mexican electoral authorities. The quantitative dimension of this challenge means that 87 million citizens will go to the polls to the federal powers, uh, to elect the federal powers, and also the 90% of them will be able to vote for the renewal of more than uh, 3,600 3, representation positions that will be in dispute in their states. About 154,000 polling stations will be installed throughout the national territory, which means that 1.1 million citizens will be endued with the electoral authority to receive and count the votes in the ballot boxes, to receive the votes for both the federal and local elections. To verify that the, uh, that the money invested in the elections adheres to the constitutional criteria of equity and transparency, it is estimated that more than 70,000 uh, uh, 70,000 rep uh, 70, 70, uh, reports from parties and candidates will be reviewed in a very short time. If we briefly review what has happened in, uh, in the federal elections uh, of the last 12 years, we can clearly identify two constants. First, the need to adapt the rules of Mexican democracy to respond to the demands of a growing electoral competition. And second, the unaccept uh, unacceptability of defeat by contenders. The 2000 elections, which represented the first alternation uh, of the federal executive power, were conducted with rules that were agreed on 1996 reform. The validity of those regulations, coupled with the margin of victory between first and second place, uh, uh, and with the second place, and with that the second place accepting the defeat mandated at the polls, allowed the alternation to take place without major unrests. In 2006 elections, were held with virtually the same rules that were agreed in 1996. That uh, uh, means a decade lag in, re in relation to the di dynamism of political pluralism and with the changes in the correlation of forces in the entities and uh, in, the parliament, uh, uh, in the parliament house. This lag prevented uh, the electoral framework to be updated to meet the growing competitiveness manifested in, these, in different elective areas. The difference between the first and second places was 0.56%, which means 236,000 votes from a role of 50, 45 million voters. And in addition, a miscalculation in political communication prevented the results of the quick counted to be known immediately. The post-election conflict on that year uh, der uh, derived uh, uh, derived from, not, from the not acceptance of defeat by the second place resulted in a deep electoral reform that regulated access to radio and television and the consequent absolute prohibition to purchase, uh, to purchase air time in those media, as I just related. Also established rules for pre-campaigns, the internal uh, the, 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 um, uh, uh, the, the primary elections, extended to provi the provisions for total and partial recount of voting and strengthened the oversight powers of the electoral authority to prevent money from distorting the competition. In uh, 2012, the new rules for recounting and the lessons learned about communication of the quit count and the fact that the difference between the first and second place was more than 3 million votes 
more than six percentage points, prevented the outcome of the election to be questioned. <coughs> However, the unaccept unacceptability of the defeat was manifested in the questions about exceeding the ceilings of campaign spending, the uh, misuse of, sophist of sophisticated accountancy engineering, and the interference of local authorities in the organization of local competitions, all, all of which resulted in the new electoral system I was talking about at the beginning of this lecture. The new rules, as I already pointed out, tend to strengthen strengthened the impartiality of, so of local authorities and to standardize the procedures for those elections. A new oversight model has, uh, that limits the possibilities for parties to tamper the accounting information of their campaigns was created and exceeding the ceilings on campaign spending was established a ground for annulment of the elections, as I just said. For 2018, the new rules of the democratic game updated two years ago, and which are, uh, which are procedurally perfect, uh, perfected by the experience of each year, it so happened in 2015 and 2016, and will surely happen with the, uh, with the ones of 2017, the elections next, next year, make it possible to assert that we will reach the competition of the biggest election of our history with the best, I hope, electoral rules that us Mexicans have, e ha have given ourselves. We have uh, provisions to recount all of the votes. The preliminary electoral results program, uh, simultaneously, uh, the so-called PrEP, simultaneously publishes the digital, digital image of each captured certificate we have the conviction and the experience to disseminate the vote ranges the same night on the election day and prevent rumors from generating uncertainty, uh, uh, uncertainty about the results of the voting. Before the electoral court issues its ruling, its ruling on validity of the elections, we will present the audit report issued by the online system through political parties must report their income and expenses on, uh, on, on an unreal time, by, uh, time by basis. In other words, uh, the 2018 elections will take place under the best electoral rules we have Mexican, uh, we Mexican have built. INE is prepared to, publish, uh, to publicize the results of the election in any scenario, uh, whether it be or narrow or broad margins of victory. We have the experience to recount the votes wherever necessary. The oversight system uses the same criteria to verify at the national and local levels the income and expenditures political parties and candidates, can, candidate, candidates invested in the campaigns and captured in the system, and the regulation for access to radio and television, which have been tested in more than 100 electoral process, allows us to anticipate the uh, industry will continue to comply with the Constitution and the law in the 2018 elections. In summary, the level of uncertainty of the 2018 contest is not uh, in the rules of electoral competition. We have legal and regulatory provisions that guarantee equity, transparency, and impartiality in those elections. The only uncertainty I see as electoral authority is set on the accept acceptability of defeat by the contenders. The great challenge, uh, which is not, I must say, uh, uh, something uh, uh, that uh, uh, is not the patrimony of just one of the contenders. Uh, in the last elections, every contender uh, 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 once, uh, 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 at, uh, at, least, at least once, uh, has uh, unaccept the electoral result. So, you know, it's a, a sort of kind of transversal uh, 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 situation which uh, do, do, doesn't belong to uh, just one political party. The great challenge in 2018 elections is for competitors to accept defeat, as I said. But this is an issue of political culture, not related to the electoral model or with the electoral authorities necessary. The provisions for transparency, oversight, warranties as access uh, to radio and television, 
the, the prohibition for individuals wishing to use them, the, these means to distort the campaigns, the presence of parties in, virtual, in virtually all decision-making er areas of INE, and the institutional learning concerning political communication and preliminary results allow us to confirm that INE prepares itself in every electoral process to deal with that election, the mother of all electoral battles, the 2018 ones, with certainty and maximum publicity. Out of a personal conviction and due to the uh, intermingled distribution of powers determinated in the uh, last electoral reform, I have argued that democracy is a collective work in which political parties, officials, mass media, candidates, and citizens have different roles to meet for its proper development. It is clear that over a nearly a quarter center in Mexico, we have gradually improved the procedures to ensure equal suffrage, uh, 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 the authenticity of contest and impartiality in elections. However, the results of two decades of implementing civic education programs by the electoral authority show that the isolated and changing efforts are clearly insufficient to promote a cultural change that links the undeniable institutional advances with greater involvement of citizens in public life and to generate new practice from political actors. According to the Latino Barometer report uh, uh, of last year, the perception, of, the perception of citizens about democracy is the low in Mexico is the lowest in the region. 19% in Mexico compared with the 37% in the, in the whole Latin America. Moreover, one of the findings of the country report on the quality of citizenship in Mexico notes that 50% of Mexicans believe to have no influence on the actions of governments. 66% think that the laws are not enforced and 72% that most people cannot be trusted. This perception is consistent with the low levels of confidence of the representatives, since only 17% trust them and 19% trust in political parties. In other words, Mexican democracy is in a paradox. While we have procedures that are well regarded in the international level, political institutions have very low levels of trust among the population. Lessons learned uh, should contribute to the full exercise of fundamental rights, uh, rights to raise the context of demands from authorities and institutions and for citizens to participate regularly when public decisions are taken, not just in election, but also, but also uh, 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 following the, poli the, 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 the politics decision-making process, following the discussions in Parliament, following the uh, 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 governance decision, and uh, uh, creating a context of exigence to them. It is thus necessary to modify the factors that shape political culture in Mexico. On the one hand, more effective political institutions are, are required, and on the other, citizens must given elements to participate, influence, and demand. A cultural, change, a cultural change means to foster new practices by citizens, political actors, and institutions that cohere the procedural progress of our demo democratic system. That is a change in the way institutions of the political system are perceived and work. Since a cultural change is a goal that is achievable only in the medium and long term, we are proposing to advance on two fronts. One, to set off a national debate about the importance of changing the political culture so that, that a great agreement to est uh, establish a synergies between institutions, parties, and, organi uh, and organizations of the society is reached. Another, to raise the context of demand, of demand from the society towards political, political parties and, candi and candidates uh, for them to adhere uh, the, uh, to the law, avoid 
discrediting the, le the electoral process as a campaign strategy and respect the results. The idea to take, the advantage, to take advantage of the latest experience with the oversight model halfway uh, 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 through the current electoral campaign, cam campaigns, 67% uh, of parties and candidates had not captured any report of their expenditures in their uh, proselytical activities. We have a system, it works, but political parties and candidates does not report, uh, uh, even though the uh, political campa campaigns uh, uh, approaches to their end. Uh, to encourage compliance with the obligation to record transactions in the system, INE just has decided to publicize the progress of these records so that citizens are informed and aware of the administrative practice of those who aspire uh, to a position of popular representation. Raising the context of demand on its proposals, on the career and reputation of the candidates, on the exercise of the legal prerogative parties and candidates have uh, the right uh, to, and uh, in general, on each of the areas of responsibility related to the development of the elections, is a form of social, or social pressure for the 2018 campaigns to development uh, within the legal boundaries, and that to prevent, in particular, the not acceptance of defeat when the election results are known once again becomes a, a factor of political tension that affects democratic governance emerged for the pol from the polls. That is why I'm convinced that democracy is a collective world and we, are, and we, have, we all have responsibility in it. INE is doing its job, I think. It is the responsibility of citizens and organizations committed to democracy to raise the context of requirement for political parties to do their part. Undoubtedly, the latest, the latest reform strengthened the role of the INE in the national life, not just in electoral matters, since greater powers were conferred that consolidate its role as guarantee institution and to maximize the exercise of political rights through substantive tasks, such as acting as the institution in charge of issuing an ID, identification document for Mexico, not only at home, but also abroad, through a special program. Also, the role of stewardship uh, and standardization of local elections affect the warranty of equal suffrage, participation, participation rights, essentially, and electoral equity through, a, through coordination with OPLES, with local electoral authorities and the issuance of guidelines to harmonize, harmonize the task of electoral organization and training throughout the country. And finally, ensuring gender equity in the candidacies and encouraging, encouraging policies intended to stimulate gender equity in public life. Uh, for example, in OPLES integration, when we uh, appointed the, the members of the, of the local electoral authorities, we established a nomination of 50% of them women and 50% males, uh, or protocols against gender violence, uh, or educational model, models for women equal participation, etc. Without a doubt, a doubt, to finish, in the new Mexican electoral system, the role of the arbitrator of the referee is more dense and complex. And from my perspective, the new Mexican democracy model is a commitment to strengthen the electoral statehood and to contribute to the governance, governance of the political system in general through the certainty and impartiality of the recreation of the electoral competition in local and federal elections. Thank you very much. Okay, so what we'll do now is we'll open it up, open the floor to questions. If there's any questions from the audience, you're more than welcome to uh, ask them after this nice presentation, a very historical one that looked at events from the early 1990s to future challenges in 2018 as well. So it gives you a lot of room uh, in terms of a time frame to ask questions on uh, if you have any questions on the electoral system or um, 
Okay. Even institutions as well. Yes, of course. Uh, just to let you know, uh, there are also streaming, and up to now, we have 112 followers from different countries of this uh, wow. lecture. And also, I take the opportunity to thank the presence of my friends and colleagues, the ambassador from Italy and Israel. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. So if you have a question, please raise your hand and we'll bring the microphone over to you. Yeah, good evening. Uh, regarding the very low perception of society in Mexico towards elections, do you think that it could be like beneficial to have a second round in our elections? Maybe not all of them, but perhaps uh, uh, when it comes to elect our presidents or uh, governors, and which will be the advantages of disadvantages of having a second round? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, would you like to uh, uh, compile tr two or three uh, questions? Independent candidates. Uh, well, Ireland has a very interesting and, let's say, unique experience with independent candidates. Mexico is new in this, actually just three years or less than three years that we, that the Mexican law allowed independent candidates. So Ireland has a lot of experience. Uh, I, I'm not anybody to, to give an opinion about uh, domestic policies, but I think Ireland is a very, very interesting case. What do you think about independent candidates and what do you foresee in the coming future of Mexico about the possibility of having independent candidates to all the levels? We how now we have just started with this experience and we already have a governor of a very important governorship, Nuevo León, and we have the second largest city of Mexico, Guadalajara, Rome by an independent candidate. What is your opinion what, and what do you see in the future with the independent candidates? Mm -hmm. okay. I think there is, a is there a question over there? here to the left? The most of the question is probably about the second rounds, which yeah. we, always, we always wonder why Mexico doesn't have second rounds. I know it has, yeah. to, do with, it has to do with the political parties. Before that, let me congratulate you. I think it was a very impressive and very, very, very honest uh, presentation because the situation of the Mexican people not. So congratulations about it. I think it's very much appreciated from all of us. The second round is a, is a very important situation. Less developed countries, more developed countries, many of them have the second round, mm -hmm. especially the ones that are not sustained by parliamentary um, governments. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's the, the, the main thing. The other question I have is, and the last one, is why do we need to have in Mexico electoral reforms every so often? You know, I know it has to do something again with the political parties, but some democracies or most of them have um, electoral reforms for 100 years and they just make them up a little bit every so often too. Uh, well, uh, uh, I started with the, with the second round. Uh, oh, I must say, oh, oh, no, 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 go, go ahead, go ahead. And the second yeah. round, yeah, yeah, right. yeah, go ahead. We can have a second round here. Yeah, yeah, we can ask no questions. <laughs> anyway. Thank you. Uh, uh, well, I'll start just saying this. Uh, uh, there's a, a German a politician which is well known in Latin America, Dieter Nolan, uh, that says uh, uh, that uh, the, the, the context makes the difference. And uh, no uh, institutional solution that works in one country is uh, affordable to be imported, uh, such as 
without any 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 translation you know, uh, uh, into another political context. Uh, I'm not quite sure if second round is needed in Mexico. Actually, we uh, in in the in the last 15, uh, 20 years, uh, uh, our problem, our uh, political stability problem, is not linked with the legitimacy uh, abroad, uh, 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 legitimacy that came from the from the polls. Uh, uh, for instance, in uh, 2000 uh, election, uh, uh, where the alternance in presidency. Uh, 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 occurs, uh, President Fox was elected with uh, the 40%, 42 percent of, uh, of uh, votes. So, uh, uh, and nobody uh, get any complaint or accuse any uh, 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 electoral manipulation. And actually, probably Fox is the president in the whole history that uh, 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 gets to the presidency with the uh, largest uh, democratic uh, uh, bonus. Uh, probably he spent it in the, in the, in the, in the, in the very quickly, but uh, anyway, he has a very, uh, uh, I mean, the largest legitimacy uh, 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 get it from the uh, elections. Uh, the, the discussion about the need of a second round started in 2006 uh, elections. Uh, uh, the narrow result uh, 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 provoked that many people look at the second uh, turn as a, as a way to solve the problem. I'm not quite sure, actually, because as I said, the problem in Mexico is not the difference between the first and the second place. That's a, a, a break point for every election in the whole world. But uh, 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 the second turn doesn't solve the difference between the, 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 the gap or, or between uh, uh, the first and the second pl uh, uh, place. Uh, actually, it could improve it. Yeah, yeah. And, that, and that's the point in which is uh, interesting to, to discuss the second uh, round right now, but not thinking about uh, our history. I mean, the problem in the last 20 years is not a problem, uh, is not necessarily a problem of the, uh, you know, the election's legitimacy that uh, gets the, the governors. Uh, 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 for instance, uh, the, the actual president, Peña Nieto, gets 36% of percentage of votes. The gap between the first and second place was very large in this occasion. And I don't think Peña Nieto's has a government has a problem of electoral legitimacy. There is a, 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 there is a different problem if we talk about the legitimacy that becomes of the exercise of a power and right decisions. That's another thing in first place, in second place. The problem right now in Mexico, of governance in Mexico, is not the number of votes or the percentage of, the, uh, of votes that uh, a president or a governor, you know, the executive power gets. The problem of governance in Mexico is the, uh, uh, the one that, for instance, the parliamentary system solves, as you well know in Ireland, um, uh, which is, the uh, formation of a majority in the parliament. Since 1997 in Mexico, no party has by its own the majority of votes in the parliament, in the local chamber. Uh, since 2000 uh, year, uh, uh, it occurs the same at the Senate. Right now, no party has by its own the majority in the low chamber. That's why many people uh, is thinking, and by the way, it's already uh, 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 set in the Constitution, the possibility of a, 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 a governance uh, a coalition, uh, uh, a gobierno de coalición, uh, which uh, I think point the finger right where the problem of governance is in Mexico right now. Obviously, 
there is for the first time the chance uh, facing 2018 elections uh, uh, the possibility that the presidency uh, will be, the president will be elected uh, uh, with the lowest uh, percentage average of votes in the whole history we have practically uh, 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 three political parties that uh, shares Right now, we have the possibility for the first time to have a, a candidate, an independent candidate to the presidency. Uh, and, and many people uh, uh, start to think in the second turn uh, as a way to solve uh, the possibility of a very low uh, average of uh, votation for, uh, 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 for the presidential nomination. But I insist the problem of governance that we have is not in there. The problem is how to build a majority in the parliament that support a political, a, a governance program, a governance program. In Mexico is very curious because uh, uh, it's very easy to to find in the history electoral coalitions, but uh, uh, we, we we have not still go on from the electoral coalition to a parliamentary coalition and to a government coalition. That's a real problem. I'm not quite sure that the second turn uh, solves, uh, uh, I mean, it, 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 we, might, we, we must be open to, uh, uh, but I don't think, uh, you know, the presidential election uh, and difference of a parliamentary election uh, naturally uh, uh, polarize you know, the electoral spectrum, the electoral offer. It's, 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 it's very natural that in a, in a just one place race, uh, it becomes, you know, a, a contest between maybe in the, in the beginning three candidates, but pro very probably, uh, 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 so the campaigns go on, uh, it becomes a, a, a competition bet just between two. I mean, it's, a, it's, it's, it's almost natural. Obviously, there is a chance for the first time, as I said, that the vote uh, splits in, in several parts. But the real uh, 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 problem we have, I think, is in how to, uh, 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 you know, to form a long-term parliamentary coalition that cohabitates with the uh, government problem. Except something that the Mexican people in general tends to vote the same way for the president or for the... Well, not always. I mean, I mean, there is a, a, a growing upper average of voting uh, the, uh, of people who vote differentiate <coughs> in the election in the, in the election for the presidency and the elections of the, the, the deputies or senate, uh, and the lack is always is growing election after election. Right now, uh, probably there is a, there is a differentiate vote uh, of uh, uh, almost six or seven percent, which is not less. In a closed, in a tight competition. You know? uh, okay, so maybe if we could get on to the okay. other questions okay, that were asked yeah, as well, yeah, sure, 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 very sure, shortly, sure, because sure, I think sure. we have some uh, other people. I'll answer the, 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 the independent candidacy's uh, 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 question just in the next turn, the second turn. Okay. Okay, so, hi. So my question is about, you were talking about how you establish the system and the system works, but the parties won't actually follow the rules. And you said that the way that you deal with it is with social pressure. Mm -hmm. But we also discussed that there's already a large amount of distrust for the parties. So I would argue that the social pressure already exists. So my question is, why are there no more stringent measures? So fighting the parties or eventually not allowing the candidate to participate in the election if the rules are not followed. Okay. Yeah. okay. Thank you. Another question? Maybe you could answer that even just shortly right now if you wanted to, to, okay. to address. Oh, okay, perfect, that's okay. great. Sorry. Yep. Uh, first, thank you for being here. Uh, with the coming election, I'm sure your agenda is kind of busy. Uh, it's kind of linked to the question she did, and could you consider that the system is fully protected from fairness and corruption? Hmm. Okay, this, <laughs> these are very good, uh, very good questions that, uh, allow for some reflection. Um, is there one more question related to that or? One here. 
Um, so just how would you go about introducing the foreign vote to a jurisdiction like the United States of America? Um, because that would open up the possibility of a heavy influence outside your jurisdiction if enough Mexicans register. So it could create two jurisdictions, basically, two media campaigns and split everything. Okay. Okay. Well, uh, I'll start with the uh, candidate, independent candidate uh, question. Uh, well, I think uh, the independent candidate is a figure, a, a positive figure, if we assume it, not as a, 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 as a substitute of political parties, but, a compl uh, but uh, if we assume it as a complementary way to access the power uh, besides political parties. No democracy is thinkable without political parties, and political parties are very necessary, not just for elections, but uh, to articulate you know, the co consensus, different consensus uh, among the population, uh, 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 and, and therefore, they're uh, 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 they, they cannot be substitu uh, substituted by other figures in democracy. Uh, but uh, 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 independent candidates, candidates um, uh, uh, has uh, had uh, uh, it's a figure that has, uh, you know, uh, not just a positive phase, but also a negative phase. Is they usually stand up uh, a demagogic a demagogic ground which divides the politicians from the authentic citizens on the political parties from society and I think I think it's not a, a distinction that uh, strength democracy <coughs> on the contrary uh, every people who uh, run for, uh, for a public office uh, is a, in well uh, English and, or Spanish or Italian or whatever, it's a politician. And uh, 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 it's very uh, usual that a, a, a candidate, an independent candidate uh, 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 running the time, it forms its own political parties, party, maybe a personalistic party. Uh, so, uh, uh, the fact is, the, 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 the independent candidate is a reality we have to face on, and we have to accept, I assume. Uh, the point is, how can we establish, I mean, at least the point in Mexico, in, in Mexico, uh, in Mexico situation, in which, uh, you know, equity in the, in the contest, in the electoral contest, is one of the uh, uh, reasons that aims the whole system, electoral system, uh, how to get uh, equity in the contest in which participates candidates from a political party which is not the same of a candidate of independent candidate, and the matter of the of the of the money of the founding of uh, the, uh, the campaigns is a, is an issue not yet solved in Mexico. Uh, because at the end of the day, an independent candidate cannot be so independent at all. And it depends on the founding uh, 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 that stands, uh, uh, that allows him to run for a, 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 a public uh, uh, office. In Mexico, we have also the problem that there are many legal, private, legal, and on legal interests uh, 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 and that uh, 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 would be uh, gladly support fin uh, uh, to finance a campaign. We must remember that besides the, uh, uh, the huge, large uh, private uh, financiation, political financiation, there is not uh, 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 um, uh, a just generosity or uh, 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 you know uh, uh, on interest uh, 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 intention. Um, there is no charity behind, be, behind uh, 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 the private financiation of politics, um, and that's I think the real uh, uh, issue we have to solve in the future. Uh, for instance, the Bronco, the governor of uh, Nuevo Leon, the first in the independent candidate that win an, a, 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 a governor election, uh, received as public funds just 500,000 pesos. 
and uh, the, uh, the, the ceiling, uh, uh, I mean the threshold uh, that the, he has not pa to pass, the, uh, uh, the, the legal threshold uh, uh, was, uh, were uh, uh, f uh, 49 million pesos. So the local electoral authority established that the private financiation could be uh, 48 and 500,000 pesos. So we have a problem down there because the political parties in Mexico, the political parties uh, uh, finan financiation uh, uh, established that they have to receive more. Uh, the, the public funds must be prevalent uh, uh, in face to the private funds. I, I think the, the, the independent candidates are uh, 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 something that came uh, that uh, will not uh, uh, disappear, mm -hmm. and uh, but we have to think how to you know how to match uh, 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 to the to the entire uh, political system we have built, which has built around the figure of political parties. Um, why uh, the re electoral reforms are so constantly? I don't think we have a problem in Mexico. Uh, uh, every time, every time you have an elections, uh, there is a temptation to make another huge electoral reform. It's not bad to adjust, you know, the legal uh, terms of re and regulations of the elections after each election. Uh, but uh, the problem is the temptation to refund, uh, uh, refounding, you know, the whole electoral system. And uh, we have uh, several problems to think about in Mexico. Uh, 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 first, to think in the next great you know, generation of electoral reforms. Um, the, how, to, how, to, how to protect from fairness, from corruption, the system? Uh, well, obviously, not in the way we have done until now. Because right now, corruption uh, 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 and impunity is uh, one of the major political problems we face in, in, Mex in our country. The worst thing is that in Mexico, people is uh, losing the capability of what I mean is that the corruption and impunity uh, uh, day after day becomes the natural landscape. Uh, uh, which is considered something natural, you know, for the people. Uh, the astonishing uh, uh, capability, day after day, uh, uh, we're losing our capability to uh, 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 astonish f besides corruption. And the problem is uh, not a problem of elections, but elections uh, 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 suffers, you know, the fact that, uh, the, that the corruption and impunity uh, 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 is part of the landscape, uh, actual land, political landscape in our country. Um, okay. Well, All right. There is a Maybe. foreign vote, but I answer it uh, uh, after. The next okay. Are there question. any Sorry. remaining questions? I realize that I that you've been. Oh, okay. Did yeah. Did the think about uh, about social programs, right? Yeah, about social pressure. Uh, social pressure. Yeah. Well, uh, you know. Well, it's 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 not enough, but I, I think it's uh, it's uh, 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 it's necessary. You know, two years ago, when the uh, 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 matters of Iguala, no, you know, the 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 the, 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 uh, 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 the disappearance of forty three uh, students in Iguala course. There was a, a social manifestation, the social meetings, a, a, a public meetings, of, ev of very angry people, that uh, uh, let us, uh, that make us to think that maybe this uh, 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 capability to uh, uh, to uh, astonishing, astonishing to sorprendernos, surprising, surprising, yeah, surprising. surprising, and uh, the, the, you know. It's not so surprising. The capability of the, 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 the offendernos. Yeah, to uh, be offensive. Yeah, to be offended with the situation no? uh, 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 could change. Because, by the way, 
many of those uh, uh, social protests occurs within the legal and the human rights uh, exercise, you know, the legal uh, borders and, and the, in the human rights exercise. Uh, uh, but, you know, it, it gets deliberated uh, uh, very soon. Uh, it's not enough to uh, the social pressure, but I think it's necessary. Uh, Why are there no other measures? I know, it, it, it's not the only measure. There must be, I mean, against corruption, there is not only the social pressure that, uh, 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 that solves the problem, uh, but the social pressure is, uh, uh, is necessary maybe to, you know, uh, uh, to uh, uh, arise the uh, uh, political possibility that nothing happens. Uh, obviously, we have legal measures they are uh, 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 fundamental, and the problem we're uh, facing now, just think what's the uh, largest uh, political scandal that uh, 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 finishes with a conviction of the responsible in the last 20 years. And probably we will not find just one. That's the problem that we're facing in Mexico. <coughs> Okay. And I think, uh, the, uh, I mean, I'm a public officer, but I think the, f the, 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 the only way that we can, uh, you know, turn out that perception of democracy, the disenchantment with democracy that people uh, 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 feel right now is if things really start to change, particularly in the corruption and uh, 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 impunity matters. No? Okay, all right. Uh, is there any, one, one or two final questions, I think, and then maybe we'll, okay. Hi, um, very welcome to Dublin. Um, I am from Sinaloa, oh, and wow. I've been living for the last 20 years away, and I just, I mean, unfortunately, I don't see a lot of people that is Irish today to have an experience of, of somebody that has lived away for many years and see how I can see uh, a better future, a better future in our elections mm -hmm. in many ways. Uh, especially this year, I have the experience that in Sinaloa, in one of our uh, counties, as we maybe will call, we have uh, 10 people going for mayor as independent, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Most of them sometimes are friends, you know, but I, what I think is that I can see a very good future and people have to ask all about corruption and all that, but I think um, people should start taking that away because with the independence, things are getting better. People is getting to have more to choose, mm -hmm. you know, to see the pro proposals the real proposals for people. So I, I would like people to know that it's not all about corruption. I, I see my country going in a very bad, very good path on, on, on terms of elections, very more democrat in many ways. So I think I feel proud for that. So that's all. Thank you for being here. I, I'm agree. And uh, as a chairman of the National Electoral Ex Institute, I'm also proud of, of what is happening in elections uh, issues in Mexico. But uh, 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 the fact is, right now, uh, there are many other problems. I don't think the problems are in the electoral uh, 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 ambience, in the electoral matters. Uh, actually, I think if there is one uh, uh, area in which we have done our homework well, it's precisely in election and electoral issues. Uh, but there are many other uh, issues in which uh, we'll far away to be satisfied and I think proud. I'm proud to be Mexican, obviously. I'm proud of what, what we have been done. I'm proud of the political changes we have uh, already achieved. But uh, there is a long way to go still. Well, we're going on a good I hope so. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so there was another question, I think. Oh, I'm sorry. Ah, wow, yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. The votes abroad as well. Hi. Hi. 
Hi. Talking about you know the the Mexican who are living in a foreign country, um, which is the percentage that Mexican participate you know in the elections? And also, if you try to avoid the corruption, uh, who is gonna be in charge to to check? Uh, you know, in Mexico we have. Uh, funcionarios de Casilla, I don't know the name in English, yeah, yeah, yeah. but here we just want to be in charge to check it. Okay. Okay. Great. Dr. Cordova? Okay, see. Okay. Uh, well, right now, uh, uh, for, uh, for what concerns about the uh, abroad votation, uh, 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 as you will, uh, as you probably know, the first time we had the chance to vote, and Mexicans abroad has a chance to vote for presidential elections, uh, was in 2006 uh, uh, and uh, 2006, and uh, uh, that experience uh, uh, repeated in 2012. Right now, I mean, we can say that the, 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 the average of a votation. Uh, I mean, the numbers on those uh, abroad elections were uh, 37, 38,000 uh, 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 vo votes in the first case, and 43, 44. And the main problem we identify is the fact that to vote, the, the Mexicans abroad had to have uh, their uh, 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 ID, electoral uh, 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 card uh, 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 with them. They have to send to the, to the former IFE uh, 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 an image, a photocopy of their uh, uh, ID uh, 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 to, to be a, 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 a able to vote. Uh, with the 2014 uh, legal reform, the thing changes. Right now, since February, as I said, uh, uh, the Mexicans abroad has the chance to uh, get their uh, registration through Mexican consulates around the world. Uh, right now, as the ambassador uh, uh, Perez de Alba said, uh, uh, in the, in the, since uh, February, there are 70,000 Solicitudes, Oof. Application. applications to get the, 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 the voters' ID. Uh, all they could vote in 2018? Yes. How? We still don't know. Because the, uh, the, the, uh, the law right now established that the um, voting mechanism abroad is by mail, by certificate mail. So it's very complicated. But the reform not only, not only enforces INE to, uh, 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 to expand the, the ID card around the world, but also to analyze which will be the best voting system in the f uh, future elections. Right now, we're just starting uh, this an analyze, uh, 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 and probably, probably, who knows, in 2018, there will be an electronic uh, uh, abroad votation, uh, maybe by email. There are many ways uh, to receive the, the abroad votation. Right, right now, we have the power to establish it in phase to the f uh, future elections. But right now, we have already not decided how uh, will be the votation in the next presidential elections. No? By the way, in 2018, uh, uh, there will be not only the chance to vote uh, to votate for the president, but also for the first time for the Senate. So uh, things will change. Uh, how much? Well, I think uh, the fact that the electors list can uh, uh, would not be built specifically for those elections, but it is building every day. Uh, uh, according to you know to the uh, 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 the inscription that Mexican abroad makes in the in the in the electoral list uh, uh, through uh, uh, the consulate uh, uh, will change anyway the, the the future abroad votation the averages 
uh, of participation. Mm -hmm. Well, usually there are, uh, uh, it depends on which election. The presidential elections obviously get uh, are more uh, provoke more interest in the in the in the in the citizens, and uh, uh, in the last uh, presidential election we had a 64 percent uh, uh, of participation. Uh, in the last uh, election, the federal election, the last year's election, there is a midterm election, so the interest is, uh, 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 gets down, and we had a 48 percent. Of uh, participation and uh, how to trust and how to uh, 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 oversight the the, the uh, uh, funcionarios de casilla, which is a polling officers, no, uh, polling station officers. Well, uh, uh, in every polling station, every political party and independent candidate has the chance to nominate uh, a representative. So, uh, so uh, there are, uh, uh, you know, uh, every political party has someone in every polling station that uh, oversight what uh, uh, the, 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 the citizens that uh, act as uh, uh, officers of that polling station uh, 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 acts. Uh, but I think a Mexican solution to appoint uh, the ones who will receive and count the votes of their neighbors uh, uh, works pretty well. As you will know, uh, as you probably know, there is a raffle no, of the whole potential lectures. Uh, there is a capaci capacitation, specific capacitations for those who are uh, raffled. Uh, and uh, at the end of the day, the political parties and the, and the, and the candid independent candidates uh, can uh, uh, you know present uh, uh, objections to the nomination of every uh, uh, polling station officer, and at the end of the day, I mean uh, the, the best warranty that the vote is well counted is the fact that uh, uh, at, at the beginning no one knows who will be the polling station officer, and when you know who will be, uh, it occurs to be your neighbor. You know? Uh, everyone in Mexico has the uh, equal chance to be nominated as a polling station officer. Uh, uh, and uh, I must say that uh, uh, you know, the complaints about how the, votation is, uh, the votes are count uh, count uh, counted uh, is no longer uh, besides in the polling station level. In the, best, in the worst of the cases, uh, 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 so, some people talks about uh, you know electoral, uh, electronic fraud or something like that. I don't think the problem right now in Mexico uh, is about how the vote is counted. The problems are, uh, are in another level. Equity, financiation, you know, the so-called uh, 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 compra del voto. Uh, uh, Buying votes. Freaking votes. Buying votes. Well, you know, uh, uh, you know the, the, our, our concerns right now stands in the complicated relationship between money and politics. Okay, well, thanks so much, Dr. Thank Cordova. Much. I think we're going to join all together to give you another round of applause for a great oh, talk. Uh, Thank you all for coming. Thank you. Okay, thanks so much, all of you, for coming, and we'll see you next year.